Paul's interest of keeping the European trains running on time in the Rockies. We're going to get started. Uh, I think Raj is ready to go on the West Coast. So uh, we're going to try to do a quick introduction. Uh, Steve, would you guys start down at that end of the table and just everybody run down, introduce yourself? Huh? No, come on. I don't care. Just start at the end of the table. And uh, get, I can't even see who's on this side. Chad, who is that down there? No. Uh, Gargan Singh, uh, UC Davis Medical Center in Sacramento. Steve Yakbub, Riverside Hospital, Columbus, Ohio. Richard Bay, Minneapolis Heart Institute. Mark Ricciardi, Northwestern Chicago. We'll just won't reach out down here. <laughs> Adam Greenbaum, Emory University, Atlanta, Georgia. Shruni Iyengar, Boulder Community Health, Boulder, Colorado. Samir Gafour, Swedish Medical Center, Seattle, Washington. And Jerome Cavalcanti, University of Pittsburgh, UPMC. Paul Saraja, Minneapolis. And I'm Bill O'Neill from Henry Ford in Detroit. And I'm David Brown from Dallas. Uh, are we ready to go live, Rob? Can we do that? Yeah. Hey, Raj. Yeah, hi. Um, can you see us? Yes, David? we can. Can you see us? Uh, no, we can't see you, so I guess that's normal. OK. Make but we can hear you well. All right, makes sense. Uh, I left you a little message you'll find on your phone. But we've got an august panel of about uh, two dozen people sitting up here waiting for questions, OK? We've got record-breaking panels. We're ready to go. We're not going to, we've, we've introduced the panel. We're not going to reintroduce them. So uh, okay. I know you've got three great cases between you and Seibel. If you guys are ready to go, uh, fire it up. OK, terrific. So can we, uh, first of all, I'm very, we, we, we are delighted and privileged to be a part of this live transmission. We want to thank the course directors. Uh, let me go ahead and introduce the team. Uh, to my right is one of our interventional fellows, Atish, my uh, uh, associate, Dr. Mamu Nakamura. Uh, behind me is Dr. Wen Cheng, our CT surgeon. Uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, we have D Laura, who's helping us with anesthesia, and then we have Saba, who's actually helping us with, uh, with TE. Uh, 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 we also have some very, uh, some, you know, we have Michael, who's our uh, tech, uh, we have Jason, who's our nurse, and Sam, who's uh, also in the control room. So with that uh, introduction of uh, people here, let's go ahead and actually present the case. All right, next, please. So our patient, next, please. So our patient is 79 years old, and uh, essentially, She's presenting with shortness of breath, and the past medical history is listed there, hypertension, hyperlipidemia. There's some history of uh, lung disease, but the, lung, but the pulmonary function tests were actually not that impressive. Uh, the uh, medications are listed here. Next, please. Yeah. Oh, uh, um, are these the wrong slides? Yeah, this is a bypass. Yeah, so this is the, yeah, this is the bicuspid valve. All right, okay, so is this, uh, are these the wrong slides? Okay, so uh, can you go to the, uh, so the aortic valve area is 0 0.77. No, these are the wrong slides. These are these wrong slides. So this is, this is a trick board question, Raj? Yeah. I, This is, this is it. So Dr. Siraj is on this panel, Raj. Be careful. I know. <laughs> OK, can you, uh, I think, this is, this is the right slides, right? All right, let's get the resident out to present the okay. case. All right, so uh, um, can, you, can you show us the next slide, please? I think uh, our fellow Atish is uh, confused, probably. Um, can you go to the next? There must be an intern around to blame too, Raj. Come on. No, no, no. There's no blame here. In fact, this is what we'll do. We'll actually go live. So, Saba, are you here? Yes. All right, Saba, can you go ahead and show us the echocardiogram on this patient? Tell us what you actually see. All right. So, so this is a patient who was deemed intermediate risk for surgery by our heart surgical team. Uh, um, so, uh, go ahead, Saba. Tell us uh, what you actually see. Okay, so here, as you can see, patient has normal biventricular function. She has evidence of LVH. Uh, when you look at her aortic valve, the valve uh, looks like it's a bicuspid valve with fusion of the left and right coronary cusp with a calcified raphe. 
Uh, this valve looks uh, very stenotic. Uh, it's hardly opening. Uh, there's also like a small fibroelastoma likely or lambos um, on the non-coronary um, cusp. She okay. also has, um, when you look at it, mm -hmm. Okay. So as you can see here, I don't know if it's evident for everybody, but I'm playing it slower motion, but you could see there is, if I could point to it, there is um, an opening uh, at the right uh, coronary cusp, uh, the right sinus of Alzaba, which looks like it's a coronary. And this coronary verificates um, in two directions. So this looks like very suspicious for a coronary anomaly. Okay. And this is a view of the valve on 3D, which um, really shows how uh, stenotic this valve is. The valve area, if you look at it by planimetry, it's going to be definitely less than even 0 0.8, 0 0.9. Okay. All right. Thank you, Saba. So, uh, you know, I think it's very clear that the valve is bicuspid. And you want to tell us about the measurements you got? Her 3D measurements were a bit challenging because of all the calcium on the leaflets and some calcium um, shadowing. But you could see that there, the analyst looks like it's elliptical. The area by planimetry was about 4.83, which you know would be consistent with a um, 26 sapien if you're going with a sapien S3. Um, when I measured the intercommissural distance between uh, the leaflets, it was about 29. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, terrific. Thank you very much. So uh, let me see if I can play this picture here, unless uh, I'm told. Do we, have, do we have our slides, by the way? Yes. yes. Okay, all right. So let's go back to the slides. Okay, next slide, please. All right. So as you can see that the valve area is pretty tight, 0 0.54 on this previous echo, and the EF is normal. Next, please. So this is what Saba was talking about, what she actually saw. So you can see that there is just one coronary artery that supplies the entire heart muscle. All right, so uh, in fact, the LED comes off the right coronary artery, which is coming off appropriately from the right coronary cusp. Uh, next, please. These are the CT measurements. And when you look at the analyst dimension there, it is 475, the sinus of Valsalva, the mean is about 32.3. The STJ is generous. Uh, and you can look at the LVOTs. It's a little bit narrow, in fact. So the LVOT measurements, if anything, uh, may be a little bit more consistent, um, just a little bit lower with a somewhat of a smaller valve, 428. Next, please. And the aorta was 3.9. So this is the 4D CT. And you can see clearly this is bicuspid. There is a calcified draft. So this is type, uh, you know, type uh, 1 bicuspid, you know, I don't know why we, we call it type 2 there, but this is, there's one calcified draft, so this is type 1 bicuspid. Next, please. All right, so uh, once again, the obvious uh, uh, question here was about the origin of this uh, single uh, coronary artery. It, it is 15.1 millimeters, so it is not that low, but, um, you know, uh, it is the only artery that supplies the entire heart muscle. This is a bicuspid valve. Uh, and I think occasionally the way the calcium can get rearranged uh, might be somewhat unpredictable. And uh, hence, we've actually decided that, uh, you know, we, we will protect the right coronary artery when we do our TAVI procedure here. Next, please. Uh, uh, you looked at the loose fibroelastoma-like structure on the aortic valve leaflet. And as it is, you know, at a, a center, it is standard of care now. We routinely go ahead and use the uh, Sentinel device to uh, for embolic protection so uh, next please the iliac arteries are actually shown here i think both of these arteries seem to be reasonable in terms of access next please all right so uh, what we've shown you is a bicuspid uh, uh, aortic stenosis uh, and our plan is to go ahead and use uh, um, uh, the sapien 3 valve here uh, we want to protect the right coronary artery, and we will, we will actually deploy the embolic protection device. So as you are talking, what we will do is we'll get down to work here. Uh, we will um, um, uh, deploy the uh, Sentinel device. So we, so we have a wire down in the ascending aorta. We're bringing the Sentinel device. But feel free to talk. We're deploying the first filter. 
Yeah. So Raj, we can see that very well. That was a great presentation. Uh, we're going to keep the panel from being bashful at all and have some ordered chaos to make this educational, scientific, and fun. So uh, panel, jump in at any moment with comments, questions. Uh, somebody want to comment on what they saw in the echo? Yeah, so you know, this is something that at times we see it in the bicuspid valve some degenerative calcification. Um, you know, obviously high embolic potential to it, and I think great call on, on using the Sentinel device. I was more intrigued on the CT findings, as you can see there. She rolls out on the long axis too the orthopathy that this patient has. Uh, what was the maximum diameter? Because you know, it's definitely yes. So uh, you know, we went through it a little quickly, but it was less than four. I, if I'm not mistaken, it was actually 3.9. Right. And, as Mom, we, as, okay. and as we say this, each one of you, whenever you have a comment or question, just uh, tell Raj who it is uh, so he'll know, he knows everybody. Right. But we'll do so that. you saw that we deployed the first filter. Uh, we were able to nicely uh, also go ahead and deploy the second filter. So uh, there it is. Raj, this is uh, Samir, as usual, a very quick uh, deployment of one of the... Uh, uh, a very important device. What do you think of your choice of device? So far you're using the embolic protection from the uh, Sentinel because this is something that's already approved in US. You've tested a bunch of the other different uh, um, embolic protection devices. Can you give a little bit of uh, thoughts from your end as to looking at this anatomy, looking at this aorta, looking at what's going on, how you think in the future you're gonna make a choice? as to which I device you use. I think we'll have to follow the data, right? I think there are theoretical um, advantages having uh, full coverage with, the, for example, the TriGuard. But I think eventually we'll have to see how effective these devices are in terms of uh, actually um, reducing stroke rates. So I think it's also about uh, being comfortable and being familiar with a certain device. So let's go ahead and cross the, the valve now. Uh, but I think uh, I think it's a little bit early right now. I think we we are most of the sites are still struggling with whether or, whether or not to actually use uh, the Sentinel device, given specifically the cost constraints. But I think it makes sense. At our center, we did some cost effectiveness effectiveness analysis, and I think the numbers were quite favorable in terms of using the device. Um, so we are for now using it in everybody unless we can't deploy it or unless there's a reason not to do it. Can we have a straight wire, please? But, um, you know, we'll have to... I've used the TriGuard device. It's also... And there's actually an improved version of it now. The former device was 10 French. The, the, the new device is actually um, um, uh, 8 French. You know, we're going to probably use it next week. Uh, but we'll have to follow the data. So Raj, give us a second for a panel and audience survey. Uh, panel, how many of you use some neuroprotection device in Taver cases? Raise your hand. Half, maybe? Okay. How many of those use it 100% of the time? Uh, One, okay. two, three. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, about half our panel and most use 100% of the time. Audience, how many use neuroprotection in Taver? Raise your hand. Uh, how many of those use 100% of the time? So, uh, Raj, half the panel, a very small proportion of the audience, uh, and they didn't really ask how many do TAVR, but and uh, maybe only one or two use 100% of the time. Go okay. ahead. All right, terrific. So uh, we were able to get across the valve, as you saw. Um, so those are the gradients. Are you able to show them the gradients, please? All right, so those are our gradients. Can you see the gradients? There's no LD David? pressure. Yes, we can. Okay, all right. Terrific. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put the extra support wire. So, you know, I think um, we've you, decided to do this case with general anesthesia. Do you have a ventricular pressure there? Yes, we did. Did you see, did you see our LVOT hemodynamics or no? I mean, LVAO hemodynamics. We'll, we'll hook it up again for you. We have double AO. Can you show this, please? Are you able to show Is that what? Do you see LV? Hey, it's Adam are Greenbaum. We, Do you see LV pressure? That's or is that a corner? What are you showing there? Because that is not. Um, can you please come and see? Uh, can you show this hemodynamic tracing, please? You do not have a hemodynamics feed? But that no. is not the hemodynamics. This is wrong. Uh, this is a different from. Are you able to just uh, show this, please, on the camera? No, 
Do you already have an LV pressure rush? Yeah, 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 we crossed. Did you see me crossing the valve or yeah. no? Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, but we do want to show you the hemodynamics here because I think they have, it's a very robust gradient. Yes, uh, let's move. Can you, okay. can you see that? Yes. All right, okay, so that's our, uh, okay. Can you bring the monitors closer to us again, please? So we can go ahead and Okay, so continue. 70 plus peak gradient, we see that. Yeah, it's a big gradient. Raj, this is Bill O'Neill. Um, Hi, you, Bill. You, you, were, you were commenting about using general anesthesia. This is a 79-year-old person. Uh, would you normally, why, why general anesthesia and TE in this patient? Yes. So uh, I think that bicuspid aortic stenosis, at, at least at this time, we believe it is best done with, uh, uh, with general anesthesia and TE. I think there is a definite risk of aortic root injury. I think we must be cognizant of that when we do, um, you know, bicuspid aortic valves. So, uh, you know, at our center, uh, we tend to be uh, more inclined to use TEE when we are doing bicuspid aortic valves. Besides, in this case, you have this anatomic uh, coronary anomaly of a single coronary, so we just want to be prepared. Uh, we want the patient intubated in case uh, something happens. So Raj, you, you know, just run down your mental thought on, on sizing with volumes of the balloon and yeah. plus and minus, et cetera. Yeah, so uh, once again, I think uh, one has to be very careful and if anything slightly undersized uh, uh, when you're doing TAVI with a bicuspid aortic valve. So uh, while the size here is 26, okay, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Wen Cheng, who works with us, he's very, very good at feeling the annulus. We will uh, probably, in all likelihood, uh, when did we take a CC less? Because our goal here was to actually be somewhat conservative and actually take a CC less. And often, based on how, uh, you know, how the valve looks, uh, we will even go ahead and actually leave some volume in the syringe. So, um, so though we, you know, uh, we will use a 26 valve. We will tend to be conservative. I don't like the way our wire is. Okay. Yes. So, I I, so yes. is it fair to say you're headed for 26 minus one with some adjustment? Uh, yes. Okay. So Panel? Is that correct, uh, yeah. Ben? Did you take a CC less or are yes. you? Okay. So Ben confirms that we have one CC less. Yeah, All right. Right. Hi, hi Raj, it's uh, Paul Yeah, so here. our wire doesn't look very good. It's actually, I, yeah, I would like for it to be more in the apex. Um, if you do right. PDL, we may have a little bit of freedom for the wire. Okay, all right. So maybe we'll fix it after PDL. That's yeah. Raj, can, uh, we, can yes. we see if there's any MR happening from where the wire position is? Okay. Not, Not so much. Not, Not, so much. Not so much. Okay. Paul? All right. Hang on, I, Raj. I have to say this oh, wire okay. position could be mayor, right made nice more... Uh, <laughs> uh, Raj, why are you doing Paul's going to comment. Yes. So I just, uh, it's, hey Raj, it's Paul Siraja here. Yes. So, uh, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about how to size these bicuspids, whether you yes. size the area at the annular lever yeah, or super annular. Uh, this valve is so heavily calcified, I'm not sure mm -hmm. what, I, what super annular actually okay, would mean. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I'm just curious uh, how, yeah. how oh, you yes. all would size this valve, you know, given that yeah, it's a bicuspid. Yeah, so I think the, you know, our practice has been, I think, if you're using a self-expanding valve, yes, clearly. I think you, you, know, you, you tend to follow what uh, Nico has been preaching, that you do supra-annular sizing. Uh, I think what works typically all right with the balloon expandable valve is that you tend to undersize, but not by a whole size, but by uh, you know, some volume, a, a cc or two, or you know, I think that's what uh, we tend to do. Are we ready? OK, OK. Okay, sir, on. Okay, let's go up. Off, please. So I don't know why we chose a three centimeter balloon. I think we should have chosen a longer balloon in this case, but I guess that is what was available in the house. Our wire position is, is it better? It's better. Okay. Uh, it's actually okay. Coupling okay. Up Panel, while, while we're doing that, uh, Comments of anybody on Safari wires, uh, this wire, think, any other I wires, think we need to somebody. Fix this wire. Okay, so let's fix go. this wire. Hey. And can you get us a, uh, a better balloon, please? Grab, grab the microphone and go. Hi, Rogers Gilbert here. Uh, that was a 20 freeze uh, balloon, right? Is that correct? Uh, it's a 20? Is this 20 or 22? 20. 20. 20, okay. 
Yeah. How often do you do a, a simultaneous aerogram when you BAB just to make sure you didn't oversize too much in this bicuspid? <clears throat> you know, I think it makes sense to do that if you're using a big balloon, right? But our practice normally is to not use a very big balloon, so it doesn't really help. So I think if you, you know, uh, we don't tend to do that very often. I have, have to say. 18 by 5 in the room. Okay, we don't have a 22 yeah. by 5. It's in the, uh, do we have a 22 by 5? Yeah. So a panel, four, 475, 78 perimeter. Okay, Anybody a not use a 26 in a, in a balloon expandable? Okay. Everybody use 26? How many, how many would underfill it? How many would go to this nominal open? Raj, your water is huh? really yeah. I want to fix it. I, I, I will underfill this. I will agree with you. Take one out, and I watch the atmospheric gauge. Make sure it don't go over seven. So go ahead, make yeah, microphone I would, comments. I'll probably go one there because I mean there is a risk also of sinusal rupture there with that stalactite on that rafe and it's pre-calcified. But yeah. he mentioned about the the coronary artery also engagement, the wiring. Uh, when do you plan um, to do that as well? So I think that we want to do that before we put the stent in. So we'll go ahead. But there's no point of having a, uh, you, you know, a guide catheter sitting in the corner while we are just ballooning. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll go ahead, prep the valve here. I mean, we'll balloon this, and then just before we deploy the valve, we'll go ahead and, is this a amplat? Amplat. Okay, so we're going to try and fix this wire position because I feel mm -hmm. that a wire position is, I think this is Getting better. Much better. This is better. Okay. All right, and let's take the uh, five centimeter. Uh, 20 how many? Or 22. How many of the panel routinely use a pre-shaped wire? One, two, three, four, All right. half, half do, half don't. Well, Cost or something else? Well, now I use the pre-shaped wire. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Only so, in the last month, though. So well, yeah. Uh, uh, so I, we, we use a pre-shaped wire as well in over, you know, 15 years. Part of that is related to have you ever sawed into a left ventricle yeah, and sure. just the kind of problem sure. he's having right here. Hey, Raj, it's Adam Greenbaum. Do you routinely measure the length of the leaflets on these bicuspids? Have you found yes. that helpful? Yeah, we do tend to do that. Was this one particularly long over the, over the right corner? Uh, you know, no actually so but nonetheless i think you know as you know with raf you don't know how all of this will actually end up you know i think that's a lot more uh, there's a lot more prediction in a way uh, when you're dealing with a tricuspid valve but i think here there's so much calcium that we don't know sure i so think I the th risk goes up in these bicuspids i think yeah. the leaflets ready? are longer yeah. are you ready okay face her on please okay let's go up please yeah okay off, please. All right, so this is a reasonably good balloon dilatation, all right? So now we know that we are less likely to struggle trying to cross this, okay? So this is a very, very heavily calcified valve. Um, Again, your wire is pushing up. Okay, all right, can we make sure there is no, um, nothing around the heart in terms mm -hmm. of bleeding? It's yeah, a reasonable. So uh, I was going to ask a question about pre are, are most of you guys uh, agreeing with the, with the 26 undersized, or are there people that, because we had a, quite a bit of discussion. So, uh, so we have, I think we have uniform 26. How many in the panel would not undersize it? Anybody? Raise your hand. Um, One, two, this, um, both nominal, wire. Bill, Again, Paul. You okay? Wait, so we got two nominals. Okay. What percent oversize do we have here? What? Did we, did we, uh, were we told what percent It's 475 and 78, so I mean, yeah. you can calculate either on area parameter, but. LVOT is around 423. Yeah. That's, the, that's my yeah. only concern. The LVOT yeah. is quite small. Yeah. 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 I would go minus one and then watch for, watch for atmospheric gauge. That's kind of what we practice, and we post daily if we need it. So, Paul, I think everybody's somewhere between minus one and nominal. Can we just okay. talk about the concept of pre-wiring this before the BAV for risk of embolization and also the risk of torrential AI and having to quickly get the valve in? Uh, would would people do it differently, or would they do it like Raj is doing, with doing it afterward? Okay, panel. How many would do it before BAV? Half. All right. Okay. Let's see balance. Uh, right. Yeah, Mark. We we probably wouldn't. We Let's we see. don't expect much torrential AI. I mean, it's just. Go ahead, ready to answer. Not a common problem. I I have to say that you know, um, with bicuspid valves, 
I'm always a little bit, there's always a little bit of trepidation given the calcium and the increased risk of aortic root injury, um, especially the ones where you actually have this um, uh, calcified raft. And the worst combination is when you have a, a, a raft that is calcified and then you have a plate of calcium that sits almost perpendicular to the raft. So we didn't have a complete uh, plate of calcium here, but there was some calcium that was um, perpendicular to this raft, if you remember the, the, um, the CT. All right, can I have a 4-0 stent, please? We'll just go ahead and park it. All right, so while you're parking that, Raj, on the panel, um, a bicuspid BAV. Uh, how many do, how many don't? BAV before, this is bicuspid, raise your hand if you do BAV before, okay? If you don't do BAV before, everybody does. Tricuspid. Yeah. BAV before, raise your hand. If you, huh? Yeah, yeah, Paul's 70, 30. Uh, and so how many don't BAV, a balloon expandable, and a tricuspid valve? One, two, three, four, half. So kind of half on <coughs> tricuspid. Everybody does bicuspid. Adam? The, the root, because the root's often also horizontal, right, which makes it even harder to deliver. That's just part of the aortopathy if you have That's one. Right. And he, this root's not bad, right. but it's still a little horizontal, so I think through delivery. Okay. Well, but it is, does anybody really believe that you can't cross with a current sapien? I mean, the issue for us I think is it all, what rest it crosses. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, okay. Raj. I mean, it depends upon the amount of calcium, right? Yep. I think. Uh, so there are, there are bicuspids which are fairly benign, and, um, and I think you don't need to predilate. But I think our threshold should be low to predilate for bicuspids. So it's interesting how uh, I thought that this stent would just like go to the end of the artery, but I, you know, it's not easy to maneuver this. So I'm just going to um, hope that this will be adequate. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's Paul Saraja here. So Steve, in our last session, presented three coronary occlusions. Steve, you want to talk about whether you agree with this method of protection? You know, I think everybody has different methods of protection. I think this is probably very acceptable. I, my preference is to put a guideliner down instead of the stent mm -hmm. in, in case you don't really need a stent, because I don't think you'll need it in this case. And I always think that it's easier not to get the guideliner trapped than anything else in that coronary artery after the valve is deployed. I, I think it's a, it's a good thought. I think we um, tend Steve, to use it and... Yeah, Steve, my one caution is Bill O'Neill is that if you do a valve and valve procedure, you can get the guideliner trap between the surgical valve and the new TAVR valve as a, as a sandwich. And if you sandwich that guideliner, you will never get it out. Mm. So, just a caution for valve and valve. Okay. So, um, can we fix our wire, please? This wire has been so um, difficult. Raj, Shruti Iyengar here. Are you comfortable with your stent position, or do you want to put a guideline? No, actually, I, I, I have to say that I am less than satisfied by our guide. Uh, Okay, so now, for whatever reason, I was able to advance this further and around the band, which makes me much happier, which means that I can pull back my guide, you know, way back um, as I deploy, and it hopefully will not interact, but let's hope so. All right. Less of a wing and prayer strategy. Okay. Uh, yes. Yep. So that was a that was a Paul here. That was a beautiful crossing uh, yeah. with the deflection on the catheter. It just went. So let's see where we are actually. Let's. I don't think we are across the valve yet, are we? Or did we come back? Let's see. No, I, I turned it the way across. 
All right, so we will go ahead. Actually, I think we need to be a little bit down. Yeah. Oh, no, but the push it back. All right. Can I have a J wire, please? Because everything this, this is just a very crowded place, you know, down there. See if we can get our. All right, so that's our pigtail. Come back. Hey, Raj, it's Paul here. Just a practical question. Yes, please. Where, where is your pigtail catheter in? Was it through the left femoral? And your guide also through yes. the left femoral? Yes. So did you do two arterials to the left? That is correct. Okay. okay. So we're going to go ahead and bring this guide back a little bit. First of all, let's try to understand. What was our deployment angle? LAO5, okay, so let's go to LAO5. So our goal is to land this valve high. So we want to come back. Test, please. All right. All right, let's just take a picture first, okay? Inject, please. What do you guys think? Okay, too high or too low, panel? I think it's fine. Looks a little aortic to me because it looks like the balloon mount is a little bit off yeah. center. So. Yeah, but, uh, but you know, the, our goal is to really land this uh, High. A dash high. I think overall the panel seemed to think it's in a pretty good spot. Bill made that comment. Uh, the other was aortic. Everybody like the position? Anybody not like the position on the panel? Okay. You got, are, we, are we ready, okay. Ben? Okay. We're from the government. We're here to help, Raj. Okay. All right. Okay. Is everybody ready? Yes. Okay. We have pericardiosynthesis tray in the room. The pump is primed and ready to go. Okay. Pacemaker on, please. Inject, please. All right, let's go up. Let's go up. I'm going to. All right. Okay. Down. Off, please. All right. Please look around the heart quickly. Look at the aortic root. Look at the LV function, too. Our pressure is not bad. Pressure is. Uh, Little soft, but around 95. Okay, this was. What did the uh, pressure go to? AO ventricle percent of deployment panel. So that was uh, almost at zero. 95.5? Yeah, 95.5 or 100. Yeah. So, or 991. Yeah. All right, so we've, our wire has come out of the, as we were trying to bring this back, but that gives us an opportunity to really look at the valve nicely. Okay. The function looks good, there's no effusion. Yeah, the inferior okay. walls Here. Raj, did you see what the balloon pressure went up to? That's the panel's question. Five. Uh, Wen Cheng tells me in my year five. Would you consider post dilating this even though there's no PBL or you know, the gradient is acceptable? It looks like it's a little okay. under expanded on the frame. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I think that, uh, let's take a picture. So our, our Main coronary artery is open, so there's no problems with the... All right, so I'm going to gently bring the stent back. Uh, I think that I, I, if there is no paravalvular AI, no. I, I would be very, very reluctant to post dilate. I think uh, the risk of aortic root injury is not trivial. And I think if you look at this frame here, it looks pretty good, actually. It doesn't. Yeah. Panel survey. Anybody post dilate? Raise your hand. Anybody? All right. Let's see Let's a, a, a one a test. Okay. Majority of no post dilation. All right. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is what we've done, right? So we're going to remove the Sentinel device. We'll, we should give you uh, gradients, huh? Let's see if we can quickly cross. Mm -hmm. The only reason why I may consider post dilate is because we took one CCL. So I would like to add back to nominal if possible. Give me, that that yep. would be the part only 
rationale and also depends on the age group. He's intermediate risk patients. So you, if you want from a durability standpoint, I'd like to have a you know, potential there. Let's see if we can quickly give you the gradients. Uh, because what we would like to do then is take you to Cybel, who's got a mitral case, and then hopefully we can bring you back to show you another aortic case. Okay, all right, so let's get the gradients. So we, we'll be, uh, you'll need to show the gradients from the screen. Mm -hmm. Unless, which one? All right, ready? Let me advance this. Or actually, we can take it off the, the guide catheter. Can we do that? Yeah. Huh? Do I need to advance this or no? I don't think well, I need um, to. Okay, so we can take those two pressures and we can get to It's maybe more okay. accurate. More accurate? All right, Mama. All right. Good. We don't, we don't need, this, need one. this, so this is out. All right, let's go ahead and give gradients, please. Yeah. Mm, my echo is good. So there is no delayed uh, fluid accumulation. I think you have to be careful in some of these cases. Um, all right, can you show the hemodynamics? Are you able to see the hemodynamics? We are, Raj. Beautiful superimposition of the curves. Uh, we'll even go ahead and say beautiful case. Well done, Here. very efficient, great outcome. Panel comments? Anybody? Here. We are removing the filter now. Yeah, Raj, it'll be interesting in this patient. She's 79, so at uh, 10 years from now, when somebody goes put in, when Mamu puts in the valve and valve, it's going to be a real problem <laughs> because the valve and valve will totally occlude that coronary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you're, uh, you're right. Uh, I was hoping on doing it myself, but... Yeah. <laughs> well, I, suppose you could, I suppose you could do another sapien. But, but, <laughs> But Raj, now, Raj, now that you've done Basilica, you'll, you'll have a solution for that. Right? I, I agree. I was going to actually ask you, uh, Adam, uh, you know, at your place, yeah. uh, you would probably uh, tear this apart first. Yeah, <laughs> we, we would, we've now, at, at Emory, we've now been splitting the bicuspid so that you don't have to put the stent in, particularly because they have longer leaflets, and, and yeah. it looks like you can do it. It may have some advantages, but... Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> terrific. So I think we're done here. We'll uh, take you to Cybel, and hopefully right. we'll bring you back um, in about 40 minutes or so. Beautiful. Great comment, right. Adam. Okay. Great case, Raj. Thank you. We'll be back. Thank you. Seibel? We're flipping, flipping cameras. Are you there? Yep. Can you see us? No, not yet. We, uh, let's see. Yeah, we can. Okay, there you go. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? Yeah, we're fine. We actually mistimed us how we realized it was one hour earlier. We rushed through the case. <laughs> So anyway, we have in this room a Moody Makar, cardiac anesthesia, and also does echo, and then Bob Siegel, Robert Siegel, the head of echocardiography. He actually doesn't come in the cat lab anymore nowadays. He doesn't like us. But he's here because he's his patient. And then you have Shirag, he's the interventional fellow just finishing. And Lewis over here, he's just started a month ago. And he's like, in the, we have this rule, see one, do one, teach one. So he's in the second stage, do one now. So he's going to do the procedure. Takao, and then we have over here, uh, Nate from Abbott. We have Melissa and Kaylin. Kaylin, how are you? Kaylin works in Vegas in the entertainment industry. <laughs> Part time over here in the cat lab. And so we're going to present this case. So I want Bob to present the case because it's actually Dr. Siegel's patient. And it's a little controversial. Okay. So this patient, let me go to the next, is a 46 year old woman. She's a yoga teacher and also Pilates teacher and does spinning. She, your cardiac history is at age 12. She was diagnosed with a murmur. Uh, and was, at age 12 was found to have a heart murmur and then found to have bileaflet prolapse. She's had palpitations for many years. She's had serial follow-up with echo and her echo started to show some LV dilatation. Recently, I did a stress echo on her and was concerned she, she had significant mitral regurgitation, but she had an absence of contractile reserve and slight dilation of the ventricle with exercise. Uh, over time, her ejection fraction has fallen from 68 to 53 percent, and the LV is dilated. And by echo, the effective regurgitant orifice area is 0.6 to 0.7. Because of the absence of contractile reserve and decision should she have surgery versus a mitral clip, and it's being a bileaflet valve, uh, we did a cardiac MRI 
where we found she had diffuse myocardial fibrosis, some subendocardial scarring in the posterior wall. Her regurgitant fraction by MRI was 45%. In addition, she has some thrombocytopenia. Shown here is her echocardiogram. You can see she's got significant bileaflet prolapse. In the four-chamber view, you can see that the regurgitation goes into the pulmonary vein in the transthoracic study. So, uh, next, the next slide. Good. This is a TE that just sh that shows that she's got the, the lateral scallop or P1 is partially flail and you've got a very eccentric jet. And it's a bar Barlow's valve. Right? And it's a Barlow's, it's a Barlow's very myxomatous valve. So the surgical repair rate is not going to be 90%. It's going to be between 50 and 75, 80%. And the re risk of recurrence is also going to be high after repair. That's a very Rob? insulting comment that you made to Dr. Trento. So uh, this is uh, João Cavalcanti from Pittsburgh. Um, mm -hmm. Great case. And uh, I'm, I'm quite curious because um, you know this phenotype that you have been describing there um, with the mitral valve prolapse and the fibrosis, it has to do a lot with this mitral anal disjunction that, that you show it nicely there, you know. And um, did she have a lot of arrhythmia, PVCs on that? She, whole she's had PVCs, but no ventricular tachycardia. Yeah. I've got some other patients with VTAC that have a lot of late gadolinium in the posterior lateral wall. Indeed. But my, my concern is without fibrosis, how well will she tolerate, you know, cardioplegia and coming off pump and a big surgery? So that's why we're here today. And she was reluctant to have surgery and much preferred to have a, a mitral clip procedure. Well, I mean, to be honest with you, Bob, uh, Robert, uh, Alfredo wanted to operate on this patient, but then you actually showed the MRI to him because this, she's a young patient. Her STS score is like 0.1 or something yeah. like that. So. But, but the absence of contractile reserve on stress echo infers a worse prognosis right. with surgery. And the other thing that uh, any, con I mean, this is quite controversial. That is, what does the panel say? So uh, just one quick, quick comment. Is this diffuse myocardial fibrosis by, you know, is that by late gadolinium enhancement or is this by like ECVOT1 mapping? It's late gadolinium uptake. So, and there is no amyloid, that there's nothing else because no, it's quite no. bizarre that she would have such a degree of fibrosis. I mean, we see that much more with regurgitant the, lesions than aortic stenosis, but, yeah, but that's mostly the posterior lateral wall. Okay. Bob and uh, Seibel, it's Samir here. Obviously, Seibel, you've done you know, one of the early cases of that young lady that you've told us about that has lived for so many years. I think my question is, you know, we'll see, obviously, on the anatomy, and you must have picked somebody that you're very confident can be treated with MitroClip, but down the no, line... No, I wasn't very confident. That's uh, why I brought up the patient. I told them I'm not sure about this thing, but there'll be lots of good. Uh, famous physicians on the panel, and they tell me what to do. So in terms of... <laughs> Further LV remodeling and things down the line, would you think rather instead of mitral clip about a mitral valve replacement because then you could think about valve and valve along the line, what's the oh long term strategy down the thing? I, I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> I mean, I would never think of doing a mitral valve replacement in a 44 year old patient. So, Saibal, it's a. Paul. I would shoot myself. <coughs> Saibal, it's a. Saibal, uh, Bob, it's Paul Siraja here. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. So, How are you doing? so I'm really happy to be on this side because last time I did a live case, you gave me grief uh, no, to, to no end. <laughs> you actually told me not to do the procedure uh, no. <laughs> in front of the audience, which was lovely. So I'm going to tell you. Not to do the procedure. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So, uh, good, but, but Paul, I tell you, you but I, I think the issue here is really real because you've got uh, a young, she's young, her SES is low. Yes. She's not prohibitor risk at no. all, not no. even close. But the issue is, is that if she goes to surgery, there's a high chance she's going to end up with a valve replacement. Right. And so this is what I think we're seeing some in our practice is that, well, if there's a reasonable chance you're going to end up with valve replacement, why not we just try MitroClip? as a relatively less alternative, and if it fails, you can still have surgery. It doesn't obviate subsequent valve replacement. But right now, the IFU doesn't indicate that. But I tell you, in our practice, I think we've had these discussions more because, again, if we can avoid a prosthesis, I think the patient's better off. So, so Rise, give us one second for a quick survey. Panel. Uh, we're oh, just gonna, I'm we, never going to give you a bad time ever. I know. So, hang, so one hang on. Uh, this is the, rapid the fire, absence. just two choices. Oh. Surgery, MitroClip. How many for surgery? Raise your hand. One. How many for mitral clip? 
everybody else. Okay, so you're about... What about valve about, replacement? How many people for Transcath are valve replacement? Since somebody brought that up. Well, Gil no, Gilbert I, was... I, you know, she's well, way too young for valve yeah, replacement. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I can't imagine yeah. sending a 46-year-old for intentional valve replacement. Yeah, it, okay. it just, just way too young. Uh, so one more thing. Uh, audience, how many for surgery? Raise your hand. Low, again, maybe 5%, 10%. So, so not, even the, not even the surgeon is raising their hand. Okay. Oh, wow. All right, so Seibel, you're probably 90% covered uh, here. That's about the best we got for you. Paul's coming over to your side, maybe. I know. Well, Paul, thank you. So we're gonna st uh, we've done some stuff already. I just we did for the time uh, we did the transeptal. It's actually quite a difficult position because we can't get height. Uh, so can we just show the transeptal? Or don't actually show? Why don't we show some of the T images? Because we have to decide what we're gonna do. Uh, and the other thing, Paul, um, because I waited for the XTR to be available, because you agree, this being a bileaflet Barlow's type of valve, uh, this would not be well served by the standard NT. But now since we have the bi bileaflet prolapse with so much of tissue, I was hoping that this would be better uh, for an XTR. You agree I, with that? I, I, I How many in the audience have been using the XTR? How many in the low, audience? Low use there. How many panel? Three, four, everybody, almost everybody on the panel is using yep. XTR. And what do they think about it? I think it's a, it looks like a thumbs up. Yeah. 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 Wait. I think I think the issue is Cybo is Gilbert here. How are you? Gilbert, how are you? Good. I think uh, well, let's see what the transeptal height is. I think with XTR, I mean, because this is a frail uh, prolapse, not a restricted uh, pathology. Yeah. So the question is whether there'll be enough room for you. Pull There's actually the grass. not much a room. That is a problem. That is actually quite a difficulty. I did but, the transition. This is know, what it looks I, I like. Think, right. really I, think that's, I think that's where XTR actually can be somewhat advantageous because as we close XTR, we tend to push it into the LV and rather than pull it up above uh, the annulus per se. So and is that so, what you're going to do? Yeah. Okay. And it seems that this is a beautiful picture showing the lateral jet. So my goal is to do the, just the lateral part. See that? There's only a lateral, uh, really it's prolapsing, but I think I'll take care of the lateral part of P2 almost P1, try to put two clips in that corner. And uh, so we just, can you show the transeptal? This is a beautiful picture, by the way. Uh, can you show the uh, transeptal uh, use the vehicle? Because I want to start now. Seibel, it's Adam Greenbaum. There's a hey, Adam, how are you doing? Good. Looks like there's a ton of an annulus uh, area here, but are you worried about the XDR in these barlows where the annulus isn't that big to start, that, you know, when you take all that extra tissue? Um, I've, I've been quite, I've not done that many, I've only done 10 cases of X, 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 XTR, but uh, I found in, in, in uh, patients with degenerative mitral valve disease, XTR is really good. Uh, e even just prolapse and flails. With functional, some cases I'm a little bit nervous doing cases, but most of them it's okay. And the other thing we'll show you in, uh, Adam, you already used XTR, right? Yeah, we just, uh, we, we just started. We just started, yeah. We one, so we're not going to open one. the clip completely, but in this case, you, it's a very large valve. So I don't think that'll be an issue. Yeah, it's no, very, this very one looks, valve, this one looks huge, but sometimes the annular plane itself is narrow, right? And it, and it prolapses yes, all the way Yes, in that case, back. what I'll close it uh, to 60 degrees, as, you know, as Paul was saying, to close the clip to 60 degrees while we advance. So um, we're just going to start with this, first, with an XTR. We've done, the, you've seen where we've done the puncture side, right? And uh, I'm just advancing, go ahead, Shirak, advance it. Hey, Seibel, this is Gagan. Um, Hi, Gagan, how are you? I, the height that we saw was only 3.7. Yes, we, that's all we, I could get. We saw you were very posterior. Where were you in the bicable view? In mid-fossa. Mid-fossa. Do you feel sometimes if you stick superior or maybe even stick the thick part of the septum, you can get a few more, maybe another inch that way? Um, or another I centimeter? could, but I don't like puncturing in the mid -fossa. You can see that's the bicable. Can you yeah, see that? Yeah. Actually, can you guys make echo big and floral small? Echo big and floral small? Good and just uh, start turning it in. Yeah, just go to bar, short axis, Bob. Okay. That's just a second. That's right, that's enough, okay. So I'm gonna see the height, because this has been an uh, issue that you brought up, and I have a feeling I won't have height, and so I have to do maneuvers to develop height. So can you show, can you show by commercial LBOT? Yeah. I think it's bicommercial is 56, right? No, bicommercial. Bicommercial, right. Okay. All right. Okay. Saibo, what's the V wave? I see the pigtail up there. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, she keeps on going to SVT. Can you show the pacing rhythm? This is now in SVT. She keeps going to SVT. The B wave is like 20, 25, but this is in tachycardia. So, you see how we have an issue now? That I can count, if I counterclockwise, I have no height at all. So, what I'm going to do now is I have to gain height. So, the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to clockwise the guide. So, this is a trick to show people who are not bring up is first clockwise the guide as much as you can and then use the M knob to go down and then use the A knob to get anterior. So stay like that, Bicom LBOT, and I, as I'm gonna get it in, and then use the M knob, and now I think I may have had the height. Can you see where we are now? Can I advance the clip to the system? Okay, yes. so you see how anterior I am? Mm -hmm. uh, posterior. Posterior. And posterior, so I'm gonna use the A knob to come anterior. And then coming back like this, and then I'm gonna use the M again to bring it down. So you see that? I'm using the A knob, and this is an important trick, see that? Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of it already, um, and it's a bit of, you see this, uh, Gagan? If I had done a very high puncture, it would be even bigger, it would have been even more as a um, wall hugger, see that? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give aortic right this way, I'm just gonna give positive to the guide, and then I'm gonna give a uh, little less M, and I'm just gonna give more A knob. And as I do A, you need to give more M. And so now I'm getting a little bit more orthogonal. Still not yet there. It's gonna be a real height issue, okay? So let's go a little bit more clockwise to get more height. And then let's do a little bit more A, and let's do a little more M. And so now I'm a little bit better, right? This is the best I can get. I can take off a little bit of M. Can we get a, a better Bicom view? Yeah. Like 56-ish, I think, right? How's that? Um, yeah, can you retroflex to make it up and down a little bit? Saibal, it's uh, Paul here. Do you think that uh, your pigtail, I see you have a pigtail for LA pressure. Could that be causing some of that tachycardia? Uh, no, no, no. It was occurring from the start. Oh, it started okay. as soon as we started punching the septum, everything. So that's a nice view. Uh, I, is that a bicom show? No, no, we're going to go to six degree. Okay, let, can I get a good bicom show view first? Let's get a good bicom view first. Cybos, Gilbert, what was the starting gradient on this valve? Gradient? Yeah, what's the pre-TE uh, yeah. gradient on the, on the like valve? It's like one or two, uh, very low. Why were you worried? Cybo, something is wrong with the image here. Yeah. Uh, I think like try to, try to find, you know how you usually find it by 3D end phase? Let me get a good bicom, I'm not getting a good bicom. I think you're, turn the probe a little bit. What is happening here? Are you flexing it a lot? Okay, that's, that's good. That's actually better, right? Put color on. Okay, good. Bring the probe back a little bit. So you can, that's right, that's awesome. Explain that. Joe, Adam, Richard, comments while he's doing that. Everybody's waving their hands. Uh, Gargan, Gilbert, Steve. It's comments. looking at the trajectory. I think that's the question whether you have a good uh, coaxial at, you know, Yeah, this is a attack. better trajectory. What do you think about this? Looks I'm getting a better trajectory? Yeah, I think that's going to be the challenge, You're trying to get to be as perpendicular as you can so you don't end up when you go into venture. So I'm getting it slightly wall. better now, right? Do you, do you have any plus on at all or no? Plus, a lot of plus on the guide, yes. I have plenty of plus on the guide, okay? I like your AP, but I think your ML needs to be adjusted a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so I'm just going to give a little M, M more M. How about that? It looks better now. You look like that? I have no height above the valve, so I can't pull it back. So I think this, I like no. this the best. Put color on. Yeah, let's start here. Let's open the clip. Let's open the clip. I think the piece is coming a little medial to you, don't you think? You still have some... Uh, no, we're going to start from lateral to medial. Yes, we, the, the piece, I'm going to go uh, from lateral to medial. I know there's a, it's a wide jet, so I'm going to put two clips. I'm going to put the first lateral, and then I'm going to go medial. 
And you still have some Is slack Is your well. grippers down? Oh, okay, there yeah. you go. Okay, so I'm just going to turn it around clockwise. Saibo, quick question. In these very bulky bottles type valve with XTR, do you tend to enter the LV at 60 or you close a little bit more just so that you don't get caught? Or what, what is your strategy? Uh, I'll do 60. Yeah. Okay, so that, that's quite good now. We've turned it a lot. I can't transmit the torque, so that's the problem. But that's actually pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go back to, so I think we are quite middle. I think we should go a little bit more lateral, right? Mm -hmm. So let's advance the system a little bit. I, I don't wondered if you needed to come more medial because I, I thought the pizza was more medial. And, no. uh, Put the I, color on. Yeah, see, I think, I think the flail is a rising medial going lateral. Okay, so shall we go here then? Good, how about this? Okay, how about this? I like this position. Explain mm -hmm. that. Okay, good. And let me know when you want the ventilation yeah, to be down. Yeah, to reduce the ventilator now. So usually we reduce the ventilator to uh, reduce the movement so you can reduce. I like that position, Paul. What do you like? Do you not well, like that, uh, Paul? With the vent off, you should go more medial, which will make right. me happy. Right, yeah. So I'm just going to uh, push it. Uh, I may, is the vent down? Yes, vent is down. Okay, don't put it completely down, just to keep it right. Okay, so I like this. There's actually a flail over there. So I'm just going to go in. And as I'm going in, I'm going to see fluoro to see if it doesn't dive. See, it starts to dive, so I'm going to take the M off. And that's good, I like that. Saiba, with the longer arms, have you felt you, you got pushed around a little bit more uh, crossing the valve in terms I of did. changing? But you yeah. see that nice position? Yeah. yeah. I like yeah. that. Yeah. So I'm going to open the clip a little bit more so that you can see 3D end face. And I like that position. Paul, do you like that position? I think with Guys the in the panel? What? Okay, let's do 3D end face. I think with XT, I'm, uh, I'm being a lot more careful looking at trajectory both above as well as from below. That's mm. correct. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm correcting it now. A little bit of counterclockwise. Yeah, floral has really helped me, at least personally. We yeah. actually routinely take the paradox cell off the clip in, okay. in the LA. And then so I like that check. position, guys. Okay, let's clockwise the guide. Are okay, you roughly 12.6? Cool. Yeah, cycle? that's perfect. It's hard to tell. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Are you well, roughly 12.6, well. or where are you in terms of orientation? I think, I think you drifted lateral, though, don't you think? Yeah, it's okay. I want to start lateral ball. Yep. How about a clip orientation, Saibo? Because the, the, the flare was more lateral. So how are you grasping kind of lateral P2 to A2 or A1? Because yeah. it looks like, like more like 12. Yeah, you want me now. to clockwise it a little bit more, right? I was thinking more like 1.7 maybe. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I like that. Good. That's great. Let's go to uh, Bicom LBOT. Let's grasp yeah. it. Hey, Saibo, it's Trini here. Uh, quick question. Put color on. Saibo, with your lack of height, do you think you want to try with just one clip here rather than going for two clips definitively? Exactly. It's such a big... Uh, because you have a lack of height yeah, here. Yeah, it's I think such that a big... We, we need two clips in this patient. You know what I'm saying? This is a nice position, actually. Mm -hmm. Let me see uh, LVOT better because I'm going to grasp it now. You can do a single if you want to. Actually, that's not bad. Saibo, what, what arm angle are you at now? Uh, you look like 180 almost, or? I'm almost 180, yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna, uh, because there was such a large valve, I kept it 180. But uh, you're right. I'm going to bring to 120 it's now. It's be hmm? I need to change Sinking the angle so I can see both arms there. equal. Yeah. Okay. Can I see the valve? Clip both the clip arms. I need to see both the clip arms. Uh, whichever angle you can see both arms. Okay. And I want to go counterclockwise to get one. I'm not seeing both arms yet. Okay. Okay. No, give us a second. No. Okay, then no problems. Okay, that's better. Now I'm beginning to see both arms. That's really nice. Okay, so that's really good, eh? Mm -hmm. So let's just go up. Mm -hmm. 
it's falling off, huh? The clockwise a little bit. Actually, oh, that's that great. Really drop good. the grippers. Yeah, it looks really good. Drop it there. Okay, so we, we usually take our time and look at it again. So 3D end face, please. Yeah, 3D end face, exactly. Okay. 3D end face, good. So we, we keep the clip like this open and see the orientation. In, in X, XTR, it's very important to orient your clip correctly. So that's exactly what I wanted. Level mm -hmm. 7 and 1, right? Uh, is that what you wanted? Yeah, it looks very good. Cybo, do you guys uh, routinely try I think it's too much. Do you think I yeah. should... Uh, it's do you think it's done too much? Yes. Yeah, maybe well, a little bit now. Too much rotation. A little bit uh, too clock, maybe? But yeah, uh, the counterclock, you mean? Yeah, you need to be counterclock a little bit. It's like yeah, 1.30. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you, again, I, I keep harping on this, but don't you think you ended up a little lateral there? No, I want it there, Paul. You because want I want to take, I'll put an X clip on medial. All right. Okay. So let's what go. What color? Uh, no, I don't like this position. I'm going to, you I'm going to check color it. first before you No, move? no, no, no. It's not a good position. See, the thing is that you don't have to struggle. You can, you can just take your time, position it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to release the clip, release the grippers. See, that's the beauty of XT, uh, XTR. You can just correct the angulation, which I'm doing now. And I'm going to re-grasp re again. 3D end face. So it's a lot. So we need to correct it a lot more. Can you do it at 3 o'clock? Uh, can you put the commissions on both sides? Because I'm not sure the commissions are equal. Okay, now decrease the gain. Right? I think a little bit more, right? Okay, I like that. You want to check the position of Bicom too? Yep, Bicom LVRT. Just explain it. Yeah. Hey, Paul. So you were asking about going a little more medial. Um, is that just because you wanted to go for the target, or because I think what Cybol's trying to do is to help stabilize the flail, and, and then, then and then yes. put another one more medially. Well, That's correct. I guess I guess I just wondered if you could just get the flail and yeah. MR all in one. That, that's what I was just asking. But I think one of the things we're talking about on this end is that there's so much motion that even if he gets it, you know, the thing is still going to move so much. And in a 46-year-old, you know, you wonder if you, you're just going to put in two clips to, just oh, to stabilize no, I, that whole thing. I, I completely, uh, with the Barlows, yeah. I almost always put in two clips. Two valves, yeah, two Yeah, clips. because uh, the risk of SLDA is significant with Barlows. And you so can I, actually see... All right, so that's nice. Let me open it up a little bit more to get more tissue. Show that. So I think I grasped it nicely. You want to see 3D end face again? So, is there any utility to slow the heart rate down if you can, hemodynamically, to make it we easier? We can. We shocked her twice already. She's got chest burns now. See, I like that position much better now. She got a dentist inside. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So we're going to close the clip now, okay? So you like the position? So we're going to close it very gently. So let's go back to Bicom LBOT and let's close it like that. Watch it as we close it. I, I love Can seeing those clippers clip, bounce like that. R Richard and I, when we do these, we look for that gripper sign, uh, that bounce. Um, gives us a lot of confidence that the leaflets are inside. Get the color off, please. I just want to see the clip. And as you advance it, you close it. Can I see the clip, please? Good. See that? It's nice and stable now, right? How do you like that? Mm -hmm. Looks nice, right? Mm -hmm. Can we see what it looks like now? That looks great. Seibel, can you review that last comment you made that you advanced a little bit as you were closing with this yes. longer XTR? Yes, that's a very good point I want to say. See, if you keep the clip up like this and you try to, can I see my hands? If you try to clip as you, as, as you try to close it, the leaflet will pop out. Yeah. So when you close the clip, you start advancing the clip a little bit forward yeah. into the ventricle. Otherwise, the leaflet will just slip out. Absolutely, yep. I think the MR has reduced quite substantially already. Yeah. yeah. I think we just need... Uh, you know, Paul, because it's a Barlow's, I want to put one clip medial and I think we'll be done. I completely you, agree. And you, probably right? an NT, right? 
Um, I'm not sure. What do you think? Well, I think if you're going to put one right next to this one, I, I would just I, pick an NT because I, I don't I, know if you need the reach of an XT. And it'd probably be can easier. We look at the, can we look at the medial side? Okay, let's deploy it. I think uh, it's a lateral part. There's a big lateral jet. There is a lateral jet? Yeah, see here? There's a big lateral jet here. Uh, really? Ooh. So shall we move this clip? Either we move this one more medial. And if you go on the medial side here. Medial side is very small. You're I, right. I think you want to move it a little more lateral. If you're going to maintain a strategy, putting the second more medial, because it'll be easier. Because that, that there's not much room after if you go medial to go put a second clip more lateral, especially if you need an XTR. So I agree. I, I would rather move a little medial. Give the color off the... I mean, it's a very small jet. So the question is, should we... It's going to be hard to do... A, I'll have to come out. Because I don't want to move underneath the valve. Right? Saibo, well, have, uh, have you released some of the tension? Have you pushed forward on the clip at all? Because sometimes, you know, you can tether things open. Okay. I'll re release the tension. Look at the valve. Uh, sometimes even pushing now. in a little bit. You want to put clip. 3D color on? Yeah. 3D looks quite central, the, the clip. It's actually a little it's, more it's, medial it's than, than initially. It's, it's, uh, it's the so the question is, should we move this more medial and then put a lateral clip? No, I think we should just put a lateral Huh? We should just put a lateral clip. Yes. We don't need, we need, we don't we need to move it. I think the, the medial just, side, there is not much MR over yeah. there. Okay. Yeah. The I, just all right. I, I, all right. I, I, would, I, I would be confident that you got the flail. Yeah. And if you got, if you're confident you got the flail, then Don't I would, take it out. I would uh, exactly. I would leave this and then put one lateral. If you're yeah, if you're, and, and because I'm going lateral and it's crowding, I'm going to agree with you. I, I think we should use an NTR. Yeah, and, right. And especially I because we'll, right, and especially because of the height reason, I think the first, whichever one, the first clip, wherever you're going to put it, should be more medial, and the second one should be more lateral. Right. What's the so gradient? I, Seibel, it's Mark Richard again. What's the blood pressure right now with this SVT? Is it low or, or does What's it What's the blood pressure now? 85 or 65. 85 so over 60. Yeah, it's a through. little bit on the lower side. We're going to try to That's convert her back again pressure. now. Yeah. That's her normal To pressure. sinus. Yeah. Is, yeah. So you want to show the gradient? It worse with the real blood pressure. Yeah. So, so everyone agrees that I'm going to deploy this clip? Yes. NTR. Just, just curious, did the LA pressure go down? The LA pressure has remained actually not changed. This is, it's SVT, that's the problem. And your heart rate is 119. So the good thing is that there's, there's no gradient even in a heart rate of 119. Saibo, it's Adam again. Before you even plan, can you explain just lateral so we can see what the leaflets look like? Just less lateral, yes, where you would put the next one? Can, can we see the, uh, the gradient's two? A gradient is two at a heart rate of 1990. So she's not in sinus now. That's okay. We did. We just gave. Helen just got upset. All right. We just brought her back to sinus rhythm. Okay. Can you show the uh, jet lateral? Yeah. She keeps going back to SVG. Mm -hmm. It, it wasn't so much the jet, I was just curious what the leaflets look like if you just okay. explain slightly lateral. So I think an NT, as long as the leaflets are now close, you could just put an NT there. Yeah, I'm going to use an NT. I'm not going to use an XTR. So uh, do you mind if I just deploy this? I think we should deploy this, right? We've taken care of the flail. That's, that's the jet. See that? I, I think it's reasonable to put one, one clip just lateral. Sir? So, Shirag, you want to deploy it? It's deploy Okay, we'll get you a kibitz, Raj. Distal microphone. Uh, Gilbert, Gagan, Steve, Richard. Uh, you like where we are, where he's going? Comments? One to four comments from you all? Yeah, I think so. I think it's, an, it's, it's what you got. It's the first grab. It's good tissue, leaflet insertion. You don't have a lot of room in the left atrium to move around. And you want to minimize movement inside the left ventricle. So I think as long as there's adequate leaflet insertion and 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 Seibel, I have to commend you on that LA maneuvering was just magnificent with the with the A knob and the and the plus knob and you really got it perpendicular and I think you just mimic those exact same same maneuvers and get the next clip uh, just lateral to it Steve, so I just want to know yeah. from the from the panel how many people understood what I did while for getting gaining height like clockwise the guide yep. to gain height and then using just 
M and A. I think I think the panel liked it a great deal. I think you got a, a, a lot of uh, accolade there. Uh, Gilbert, Steve, Richard, anything to add to what Goggin just said? We'll go to yep, we'll go we'll go to media microphone. Mark, Adam, Trini, Samir. I agree with just uh, where he is. Paul. Where we're going. Uh, it looks strategy. like you got the flail segment, so I wouldn't let that go. And and uh, everybody agreeing with uh, Barlow's second clip. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And proximal. Joe, Paul, Bill. Anything to add? Just like Richard said, our, our target, if there's a flail, is always a flail, because uh, that's going to be the most problematic area. And, uh, I think he got it. Okay, Seibel, uh, yeah. so this, this took a little bit of time. Raj is uh, trying to get near that other case. We're checking on that. Why don't you keep going for a second? Uh, we're going to look and see whether we may desert you for uh, 10 or so minutes and come back to see how what kind of progress you might have made with dropping sure. this in the second clip. Uh, Rob, what do you know? Yep. Is there now also a medial jet there, Sal? Okay. <laughs> can we see the tissue bridge, please? Yeah, All sure, right. he can go. All right. Dr. <laughs> Can you see the 3D on Okay. Okay. Uh, so, terrific. Hi, Dave. Yeah. Hi, Raj. Uh, right. So we, we dropped Seibel uh, right after the first clip. We'll yeah. go back to you second know, clip if you'll we'll show us this We'll try to make this short yep. because I'd like you to go back and yep. see uh, his master skills. Perfect. How he eliminates a residual MR there. So uh, very quickly, uh, let's go ahead and present the case. So, uh, so this is the 79-year-old uh, gentleman uh, who's basically presented with shortness of breath. Next, please. And here is the baseline echo. Uh, the, there is aortic stenosis. The valve area is 0 0.77. There is moderate aortic regurgitation as well. The EF is normal. Uh, next, please. <clears throat> uh, now, in fact, what I want to do is I want to bring in uh, Saba. Are you mic'd? OK, very quickly. Can you describe what we are seeing here on the echo? OK, so this echo was done live, so as you see. Here, a patient has normal vibrant true Can you speak loudly? Yeah, Saba. can you, can you yeah. hear me better? Yes. yes. Okay. So, patient has normal vibrant function. He has a very small trivial effusion around the right ventricle. Uh, when you look at his aortic valve, it's a tricuspid valve. Um, you know, there's already like um, a guide wire uh, into the left main that you see here, but otherwise, you could notice valve looks pretty tight. Um, it's uh, deceiving, but it's uh, quite uh, calcified. There's a, a lot of shadowing from the calcification. Uh, this is the view of it on 3D, where you can notice the heavy calcification, especially sure. beneath it in the LVOT. On long axis, you notice that there is um, dilatation that affects mostly the right coronary sinus. Um, and this seems to extend very low. Uh, the sinus is measured at 4.4. It's heavily calcified. There's a lot of calcium in the sinus and as well as in the alveoli. When you do a cross-sectional of this, yeah, can you? Uh, so yeah. Saba, let us go now. Sure. We'll come back to. So can you go back to the slides since we are tailoring this to 10 minutes? Next, please. Yeah. So you can see the uh, aneurysmal part, uh, and then you can look at the coronary angiogram there. There's not much of coronary artery disease. Next, please. So what you can see here is that uh, you know, uh, we have a catheter in that pouch, and you can see how it actually opacifies. Okay, so this was done during uh, uh, diagnostic cardiac catheterization. Next, please. And you can look at the, cross, the, the CT scan here. Um, and you can see the annulus, and then juxtaposed to the annulus, you can see this calcified structure, another big pouch that is right next to it, you know. Um, so that is the structure that uh, Saba was talking about. It is the, um, uh, it, it's the sinus of Valsalva pseudoaneurysm, uh, essentially, or aneurysm, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and uh, in fact, there's no communication of this structure. It's calcified. Uh, it looks much smaller angiographically, as you can see, compared to what we see here. On the on the CT, so uh, you know a bulk of it may have actually thrombosed on the interior. You can look at the other measurements there. Next, please. So this is the um, uh, what this is striking here for is the left main height. 
It's only 6.8, so I think you know, that's another issue in this particular case. But on the left, as you can see, where the right coronary artery comes off, beneath that, fortunately, the distance is quite a bit, 25 millimeters, you can see these, the, um, the dilated pouch that actually comes from the um, right coronary uh, sinus. Next, please. Well, this is just to look at the, um, uh, the, the great arch, uh, the great vessels here, uh, and our plan is, of course, to use the uh, embolic protection device. Next, please. This is the access. So I think, essentially, uh, what you have here is a case of tight aortic stenosis, but on, you know, a low left main coronary artery, and we have this dilated pouch. Um, uh, so I just want to know if you, you know, if you have any thoughts as to how to go about this. Would you actually tackle the the, the pseudo aneurysm at this point, or would you leave it alone? Um, you know, Dave, uh, Adam, Bill, anybody has comments? Hey, panel, uh, pick a microphone. Hey, Raj, okay. how you doing? Uh, quick question: Would you use a self-expanding platform here versus the balloon expandable, given the low coronary height and the wide sinuses? Yeah. So. Uh, I think the, we debated about this, and the, the thought was that we don't know how this calcified pouch will behave if we use a, a, a balloon expandable platform. You know, will it, is it more prone to rupture? Yes, of course, it's not communicating right now, um, but would it actually rupture? Or any, any, anybody else has any experience with this? Um, uh, in terms of um, yeah. how, how yeah, to deal this, with this? Yeah, this is uh, Joao Cavalcante. It, it looks quite bizarre on the CT, you know, and I wonder whether this has been some aortic, um, you know, sinus of valve aneurysm with calcification or even a pseudo aneurysm, a, a focal dissection, am I calcified, you know? Uh, how much compliance is that? I mean, you have to probably verify, but I think the self-expanding choice is, makes more sense at least, you know? Yeah, so that's what, uh, that was our thought. And of course, we, we were initially thinking whether or not we should even deal with this dilated pouch or turn a blind eye towards it and then deal with it if something happens. Uh, so would you actually deal with this, uh, with this uh, aneurysmal dilatation? No, I would not. not. Okay, unless, yeah, unless you deal with paravalvular leak, you have some other problems that you have to seal, but I would stay away from it. Panel, okay. anybody deal with it? Everybody leave it alone? It, just, it doesn't look that large. I mean, I wonder what the risk of rupture over time is. Yeah. Unless okay. you, you know. Uh, panel, balloon expandable, I think self-expanding. I think a self-expanding would work let's, well. Let's see, uh, how, one question I had is, how big were the sinuses? Because, uh, you know, that does have an implication for your, your low coronary height. Were the sinuses yes. ample for room? So there was room. What was 41. So uh, it reminds sinuses, me that the, all the sinuses, sinuses were are greater 41. than 40. Big, so big I think that there. is yeah. a favorable feature. Of course, uh, you know, uh, the, the low height is still a concern. So anyways, in the interest of time, we'll just quickly tell you what we did. So while we were busy there, Tarun, uh, in fact, went ahead. We had decided during a meeting that we will try to tackle this if it's easy to tackle. Uh, and, and, and what Tarun did here was, in fact, he put a multi-purpose guide, which easily went in, and then he deployed a 12-millimeter uh, AVP2 device. All right, so you can actually see. So it's there. So, we, so this is where we are. We've already deployed the um, Sentinel device. This is in place. We protected the left main coronary artery. And, you know, our thought is that it's reasonable to go ahead and release this here. So unless people are terribly opposed to this, we want to go ahead and release this. The idea being that if we have to then deal with it, if you have to post dilate, for example, uh, even if you use a self-expanding platform, we will have some sort of a uh, some sort of a protection, if you might say so. So we think that the downside is little, uh, and and perhaps it's a reasonable thing to do so. So uh, we were planning to go ahead and release this, so you can actually see now that we we are attached to the uh, to the delivery cable, but we have not released it. Anybody strongly opposed to not releasing it? Does, does it feel pretty snug in there when you pull on it? Uh, Thurun can tell me. Yeah, it's actually very very snug. So it's not going to fly away. Okay, so 
Since nobody is saying anything, Paul? we'll stick with our plan. Good. Okay. All right, Raj, go ahead. And release this. All right, so this is, this is out. So to save time, since we wanted to condense this, we've already crossed the aortic valve. You can see a stent is already positioned in the, uh, in the LAD to be pulled back if we need it. Hopefully we won't. Wire up, please. Okay. All right. Has anybody used a balloon expandable um, stent in a situation like this? Okay. We, we haven't we need, had a lot of experience with this, Raj. Need, uh, yeah. Yeah. I've never seen this case before. Yeah, I, I have to say I've never seen a case. Report of a case review in the literature, there is none. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, okay. Raj, Raj, did you protect the left main just because you were afraid the plug might come close? No, the, see the plug is actually, the plug is, this is all in the right coronary artery. Yeah. Okay, so it looks strange the way it looks there, but the, the aneurysm is coming off the right coronary cusp. Okay, we protected the left main because the height of the left main is 5.6 millimeters, okay. or six millimeters. Even with so big, si even with anything big less than Anything less than 10, uh, you know, we think it's a reasonable thing to do. So that was the reason why we actually did so. So, so we are bringing in a 34 millimeter valve. And I think the other reason for using this is, I think we can, we can take our time, we can, not release this, we can see what happens to the other structures there. So I think that was the reason also, I think uh, that a self-expanding platform seems to be more um, reasonable. I think it's very hard, you can see all these calcium in the pseudoaneurysm in the valve sort of, you know, um, overlaps, so it's not very easy to identify some of the landmarks here. Um, So Roger, uh, working on taking out the parallax, I think, uh, and I, th I saw you going more LAO to be able to do that. Yeah. Sometimes people go caudal. There's also this new talk of this uh, two pigtail yes. technique. Have you used it at all in your practice? And uh, uh, what are your thoughts? We use the two pigtail technique when we are doing AI cases. Um, occasionally, test please, yeah. All right, so what we'll do is, uh, we will go ahead and pace at 100. Okay, and let's start to release this because I want us to go back to Saibo. You got about two minutes, Raj. Oh, where is the pacemaker? Okay. All right. More contrast. Test, please. Okay, so this is a little bit lower than what we would like to be. Test, please. Any, any comments, Tess, please, yeah? I think you have good deployment so far, Raj. I, I, the, Tess, it's please. perfect, perfect One, one height as long Tess, as it please. doesn't slide forward. Yeah. All right, can you be ready to pace? Uh, one second, let me pull it back a little bit when, I'm just thinking if you're a, all right, this is not bad. It's about okay. six millimeter right now, the Be ready now, to pace non, at right? uh, 120, please. It's about six right now, I mean. 120, yeah, okay. Okay, good. I would go a little higher. Okay. Test, please. Okay. Steve, you want to march out the depths for us to see deploys there? 140. Okay, come down to 120, please, 110. All right. So what do you what do you think echo wise? Let's see. Um, Can we see? All right. Let's just take a picture. I want to pull the wire back so that it doesn't eject or push the. Take a picture, please. Yeah. All right. So this is this is a little high, but hopefully it will not. So I'm going to pull the wire back and push on it a little bit. Okay. What do you see echo wise? So echo is, yeah, I'm wondering can you come? A... Can you stop, uh, maybe in fact, even come down to uh, 100, please? 100. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So I think echo wise it may appear a little bit low, but given the coronary height, I think low. It's, okay. Yeah, not Looks the other problem. way around here. Yeah. Okay. No, you're really like deep into the LVOT. Um, and in terms no, that's of on one side. yeah, paravalvular yeah. leak, it cool, it's, yeah. there's a small posterior okay. leak. I yeah. think it will but we improve. have not released yes, the valve yet. Exactly. Yes, exactly. That will improve. So, do you guys think we should uh, keep going? Uh, Test, please. Raj, can you go under Cine, take the parallax out, and do an injection? All right. Let's just see. Can you move the table, uh, Tarun? Yeah. yeah. I think you're good, Raj. I think you just need to push forward a bit yeah, and then release the valve. Yeah, I'm doing that. Valve. Okay, you're, take you're a picture, fine. please. I think I think we'll be okay. I think it will go up on the other side. Test, please. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Yeah, I agree with Steve. Push forward so that you go a little bit on the outer curve on the non, the non is a little high on echo and floral. All right. Okay. So I think, I hope we don't have to post dilate because, let's see. But echo-wise, can you focus on the echo? The echo-wise, the depth looks very good, actually. No, I mean, so we have a lot, a lot of, AI of AI from the from the valve itself, hopefully, not mostly from the valve. I mean, there's yeah, mostly valvular. There's a little bit of paravalvular. Uh, so once you remove your. Did the valve come up? I think the valve came up. Did the valve come up? Yeah, so I think we, this valve did come up. Yeah, okay, so that's all right. Yeah, I think it seems like it did move up here. All right. Okay, so uh, let's take this out. 16 French sheet. Yeah, let's get a 16 French sheet. Now, uh, what, so we, by the time we get another valve ready, is, uh, you know, is Seibel, does Seibel want to show his second clip? So Raj, we... Uh, All right, so why don't we go there? I think what we are going to do here is um, we, are, we are going to go ahead and put another valve. So we are going to think a little bit here. Okay. Raj, so, echo so doesn't look bad. If you look uh, at the, e the echo long axis, looks like the valve is pretty no, on plane. It's, uh, it's like no, zero. It's up. No? no? It's, up. it's a pop oh, out. Oh, that's a pop? I, I mean, on floral, it looks like a pop. They're severe. Oh, yeah. Severe paravalvular leak. Yeah. yeah, hang on. Okay. Hang on, Rob. So uh, Raj... Yes. We're, we're down to about uh, seven minutes of total transmission time. Okay, so time, please so go, go to Cybel and see what he has to show with the second clip. Yeah. Okay, it, and it, we are going to go ahead and fix this. Yeah, so uh, whenever you get done, uh, why don't you just ring me or Paul back on the cell phone and uh, give us a report, and we'll tell everybody what happened, yes. okay? Okay. Raj, Perfect. thank you. Beautiful first case. Uh, go save this one. Yeah. Great job. Thanks. Yeah. All okay. right, and uh, Cybel? Yes, how are so, you doing? Okay, you're back in the picture. Uh, yes, you've got yes. about seven. You've got about six or seven minutes of satellite okay. time. Good. Uh, so it's all you. Okay, so let's tell you what we've done. So I, as Gagan had said, this was a very challenging case, so I had to do the same maneuvers to go down, like flex, anterior medial flex, anterior medial, so I'm down now, and you can see what you're seeing. Can you show 3D now? Just go, don't show my face. Just show echo and floral. <laughs> That's the first time, Seibel. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not like Donald Trump. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. Fake news. Sorry. So you can see over here, um, I'm, I'm, I think it's quite well oriented, right? Below the valve? Oh, yeah. yeah. You guys like that? Yeah. Okay, now uh, let's, yeah. go to, let's go to uh, Bicom uh, LBOT. So, would like to tell them why did we go medial? Yeah, because what happened is when we, when we went down, as you rightly said, as soon as we deployed the clip, we actually noticed that the medial jet got more bigger. So I think that's why the medial jet is the, the right place to put the clip. And actually, we're in a nice position now to grasp. Put color on and see where we are. You're... You want to, want to correct my thing? That's good. You're uh, okay. touching the anterior mitral leaflet. You see okay, that. so let's go down. I just want to pull the system back and make it more medial. It's touching the other clip. Looks like looks like you're caught on the cord there on the anterior side, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, you're right. You know what that is, right? Okay. Wow, it's interesting, eh? Yeah. Now I release it. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Let's check orientation one more time. Okay. Let's just mm -hmm. check orientation. 3D end phase. Mm -hmm. The epic imaging is, in, you know, it's so interesting how cords get crowded and you miss the cords. 
Paul, any additional comment about it? That looks good, right? That looks great. For ice and perpendicular. Right? So let's go back again. Sure. So I want to be very close to it. So let's go to Bicom. No, no. I want to, I want to be more closer. So I've just moved it as close as possible. And it's quite free. Mm -hmm. And I like this position, so I'm just going to come back. And I'm going to clockwise the thing. And I've got a lot of leaflet. Right? Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to drop this gripper down. And the 3D end face. Huh? Beautiful. Okay. It's I a don't gripper know why bounce. Going down. A nice gripper bounce. So it's a little bit off, so we should correct it, right? I don't like that. So deep, let's take it out. Let's put the grippers back. And let's it go down. It doesn't look too bad on floral, Saibo. In terms of the XTR, you just I'm an echo up. guy. I'm not <laughs> like you. I'm not so smart like you. But I tell you, one of the challenges, though, is that when you get really close to the other the clip, it's kind of hard to change it to be perpendicular to the mitral valve coaptation That's plane because it may not fit next to the other clip if you want to get it very close. You almost yeah. sometimes have to compromise and go... And be far away. But this is good, right? Yeah. This looks good, it right? It looks beautiful. Okay. So let's just go up like that. Uh, Bicom LBOT. Something like that. It's much better. Can we see both the arms? Can I see, can you pull the pro back? Yeah, that's lovely. Can I see both the posterior arm? Good. I think I should take a little bit more of the posterior leaflet, so let's clockwise a little bit. And let's get more posterior. Can I see 3D end face before we close the clip? Okay. Let me put the grippers down. Okay, this looks great. This is exactly what I wanted it, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's just close the clip. Okay, Louis, do you want to do it? So let's, 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 let's see where we are by, by echo. Bicom, can I see where we are? Saibal, is that an NTR or an XTR? That was an XTR. Oh, second clip using XTR? Yeah, can I see where we are? Good, so let's start closing. Good. It's amazing how much smaller it looks yeah. when you've been looking at XTR. Yeah, keep going down. Closer, 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 tight. A little bit more down. Good. You see how I'm really advancing the clip as I'm closing the clip? Close it more tight. Good. Yeah, All so right, can I see, Bob? Can certainly I see the, the grass looks like? plane looks higher yeah. here than the first clip after. Yeah. That means we've got more tissue, right? Especially medial side. Let's put color on. That's a good view. Okay, there's no oh, MR. That's great. What kind of gradient did you have after the first clip? Two millimeters mercury. So let's get the gradients. I don't think there's any MR left. No. This is great. a surgical light result. Nice. Gilbert, you think your boss would get like this? Let's, oh. let's release the clip, then we'll discuss. Okay, sorry. So, Seibel? This is David. Listen, uh, no pressure, no rush. We don't want you to hurry. But we're under 120 seconds, so we're going to go satellite dark in a little over a minute. So Good. think about sure, what sure you want to say, and uh, we'll, we'll wrap this up. So the gradient's like uh, two, right? It's not much. The heart rate of 120, it's four, four. millimeters at a heart rate of 120. Well, actually, three millimeters. So there's no gradient, right? So let's go look at the palmy veins. And just show them a palmy vein and 3D end face, and then we can go off. Can you put the like Did your pre That's LA pressure come down further with this section? Yeah, you know what? The thing is that it's data like in the 20s because of tachycardia. So it's not the classical way I'd like to show it. There's no, v, no v waves of normal have gone away. Yeah, let's it was the, reversed before. Let me look at this superior. I mean, the heart rate is 122. Okay, Seibel, you're uh, down to 30 seconds before yes. we go dark, so uh, final comments. So I think you agree that we got a surgical-like result and the S-wave is up there. It was reversed before. 
So um, you go, do agree that with the XTR in a Barlow's valve, we could get a surgical rise result, which we potentially could not have got with the original clip. Do you, most people agree with that? And uh, I think, as you rightly showed, that, that some young patients, even though they have Barlow's, because of myocardial fibrosis, I think this is a much better option. And just show a 3D end face. And on behalf of everybody, I want to say Dr. Bob Siegel, Moody Makar, who do, this is truly an echo-based procedure. You can see that uh, the images are fantastic. Can you show a little bit uh, that it's because of the imaging you can do these procedures, right? And I want to tell, uh, there's a lot of people in the room. This is, a, by the way, a patient in the expand registry. So I recommend that all people who are doing DMR patients should put their patients into the expand registry. We would like to know the Seibel, role of Seibel, thank you very much. Clip. Thanks for the great thank case. OK, so a little bit of perfect timing. Uh, we're a little over time, but uh, Paul's granted us just a couple of comments, the best part of the meetings, uh, the commentary. So I think uh, maybe the best way to do this and not stay over time, uh, and I'm going to announce it now to make sure I don't forget. Uh, when we're done, uh, don't forget, Paul, the organizers, uh, the industry sponsors have invited you uh, to the reception at 5.30 on the 30th floor. So please, everyone, come. Uh, Paul, primary sponsors of that are? Pen Penumbra. Okay. Uh, so don't, don't miss that. It's a great event, great location. Uh, let's do the same thing and go distal microphone, medial proximal, uh, four of you down there. Uh, yeah, fr from me, I count. Uh, so I'm, I'm like Raj. Uh, Gilbert, Gagan, Steve, Richard, uh, pick a case, each one of you, any case you want. Uh, everybody else will get a little time to think. Just pick a case you, of the, any three and uh, any comments you want to make about uh, the really interesting, exciting, and uh, scientific afternoon. I'll start. Um, the, the bicuspid cases are always challenging, and I thought Raj did an amazing job. You know, the, pre, the predilatation is key, and then his positioning I thought was outstanding. Yeah, I'll, I'll just comment on that mitral case. You know, I, I think it's uh, might be a little overlooked how complex that steering was to get down to that valve. Very, very small left atrium. Actually, the, the stick was probably a little lower on the bike cable view than it should have been. But despite that, he had great alignment. And so I think it just goes to the fact that principles of mitral clip art spend more time in the LA, do excellent alignment, makes your job under the valve a lot easier. Yeah, I think for the mitral clip case, the key is really to take your time to steer and orient the XTR and get as good a result that you expect almost as uh, we talked about surgical-like. I think that's really the key for these kinds of patients. I think the mitral was a nice um, example of how with diffuse bileaflet prolapse that it can be a little bit unpredictable once you release because uh, sometimes the regurgitant jet can move on you. Okay, and as we move down the table, uh, we'll reserve anybody's rebuttal time for uh, a 30-second rebuttal in case the Republicans step out of line here. So, Mark, go ahead. Yeah, I'll go with that uh, mitral case, too. I think that although this is probably a case that could have been done uh, a few months ago with the older device, I think this XTR, I had the exact same case just uh, last week, and annihilating MR feels good, and I think the XTR definitely helps us with that. I think all the cases were a great example of uh, just because something's the newest, maybe you don't need it. In other words, the second clip was an NT because actually that maybe still be better. So having s some choices, and of course, one taver was uh, felt to be better sapien. You could you know steer it in, whereas in the next case, self-expanding. So I actually think it was a great overall demonstration that there's still some choices to make that make a difference. You know. I definitely feel that they really did a thorough workup. These were some, you know, pseudo controversial cases. Obviously, we had some discussion on the panel. Obviously, the third case, we see that something we don't know the outcome yet. But uh, the question is, with deploying self-expanding valves, obviously, multiple views prior to deployment, rather than staying in one view, might be something that obviously everyone in the panel, everyone in the audience might think of. And with Seibel's case, I think the key in that case was the fact that he didn't have a good stick, but he made up for it with his technical skill of gaining height. I think that's a very take, big take-home point. Not the Barlow, but rather the fact that he could gain height with a poor stick. I think everybody's talked about the uh, mitral case. Uh, I'll take a different spin on it. For me, I think the big thing is uh, if you have these cases, the power of MRI, and maybe I'm just stepping on Joel a little bit, but uh, to be able to show that the patient would have be high risk for surgery using MRI is another uh, uh, technique or tactic that, uh, or strategy that uh, may be beneficial to our patient population.
Yeah, thanks, Amir, for the recognition. I think that's an important point. I, I love that third case for its complexity, the unknowns. I mean, it's a complete uncharted territory <laughs> and, um, and, and the complexity and the decision making. Uh, but I think, you know, it shows also that, you know, although we have been doing this for quite a while, we still have some questions to be answered. So. So we have started doing MRI routinely on our MR patients, and so uh, I, I think we're going to learn a lot there. Uh, for my only comment is the Abbott folks out there, uh, FDA out there, so we need an IDE study for patients in whom the intended strategy is going to be mitral valve replacement at surgery. Because I do think that offering CLIP as an alternative, like what Seibel did, is a very feasible alternative. I just want I just want to finally conclude uh, for all of for having done a lot of case demonstrations it's incredibly difficult what these guys did over an hour and a half with three really complex cases and um, it's really difficult to, to uh, work a uh, very quickly comment on the uh, pop-out because we've all had uh, core valve pop-outs or deep uh, you know into the ventricle usually the pop-outs are because you don't have correct imaging and you sort of miss where it's going to go. In this case, uh, Paul and I were talking, I think what happened is that the olive of the core valve actually got stuck at the bottom, and as he was pulling it out, you could sort of see the thing come out. So you have to be really, really careful with that. And there's just little nuances about how to learn how to operate this equipment. So that's what these live demonstrations are for, to sort of watch experts do it, but then watch what put, could potentially go wrong so you can do it better for, with your patients. Okay, so uh, on uh, behalf of Bill and myself, I'll apologize for the lack of audience participation and for the Q&A, but I think as everybody noted and Bill summarized, it was an, an exceptional hour and a half of uh, incredibly difficult and fun casework to see, uh, all uh, jam-packed in an hour and a half and really well done. So thank you to the August panel, thank you for the great comments, thank you to the audience, Bill, thank you, and Paul, thank you, and the sponsors for a great meeting, as, the, as our Irish colleagues say, brilliant, thank you. <laughs> See you at the reception. Thank you.